I'm Tom Harris. I'm a professor of economics in, in, uh, at the University of Nevada, Reno, and also extension specialist and director of the University Center for Economic Development. Today, uh, though we have a webinar, uh, we give information as extension, and it's on uh, Mr. Matt Lawton, who's the new uh, state demographer uh, for the state of Nevada. A lot of people my, I've known about, uh, I've known uh, questions, who is the state demographer and what different products. They have a lot of products they produce and a lot of information. I think it's very essential for people in economic development and in uh, any form of analysis. They have a lot of data. Okay, this is, I've worked with a guy named Gary Smith, who's an emeritus economist, extension economist at Washington State University. And he developed a very nice little uh, website on data from BEA. And uh, he talks about uh, uh, population. Why are we in important for us for economic development? Basically, attracting and retaining people to live, work, raise a family, retire, underlies the economic vitality of any region, as we've seen. Population growth is both a cause and a consequence of economic growth. Patterns of population growth and changes reflect differences among regions and the ability to attract and retain people, both as producers and consumers, in their economy. This is why this day is important. It gives us not only the number of people, but the type of people that are in there. They're in a community. So what I'll do, I'll stop share. And Matt, I will turn it over to you. And uh, everybody, please keep uh, put your uh, uh, on mute. And at the end of Matt's presentation, uh, there is a in accessories or reactions here, you have a have a question. Please raise your hand, and but uh, if you want to, we'll we'll do that at the end of Matt's presentation. So, Matt, thank you for uh, joining. Welcome, and thank you for having me this morning. So, uh, as Dr. Harris said, I'm Matt Lawton. I am the Nevada State Demographer. Uh, I came to the position uh, mid last year, 2021. Uh, upon the retirement of my predecessor. He'd been in the position for over 20 years, so uh, had some pretty big shoes to fill. Uh, I come to the position primary, primarily from local government, uh, both here in Nevada and California. Uh, I have 25 years of experience in the field of geographic information systems. Uh, I also have a background in information technology in project management, process improvement, data management. Uh, my academic background is as a geographer, uh, I'm a current board member of the Nevada Geographic Information Society. So that's really the perspective that I bring to the position of state demographer. Um, I do have a, a slide deck to share that kind of covers um, some of the, the population trends that we've seen over the last decade from census data and also some uh, state level trends. But just to kind of give an overview of, of some of the products that are produced by the state demographer, the, uh, the demographic year really starts on July 1st. That's the date by statute for which the population is to be estimated for counties, incorporated cities, and unincorporated towns for Nevada. But it takes several months to gather the supporting data to draft those estimates. So December 1st is the date for which those estimates get disseminated for review by the local governments. And then March 1st is when the governor certifies those population estimates. Uh, there's also a five-year series of population projections that are also published on March 1st. And then the following October 1st, there is a longer 20-year series of projections that also include a breakdown by age, sex, race, and Hispanic origin. So the full cycle really takes 15 months from the uh, estimation date all the way through the full release of that vintage of population estimates and projections. So we, we've heard a lot of, of talk about 2020 census, um, you know, in, in several different regards. We did finally get data uh, over the last few months from the census. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and review kind of what has been released to date, pull out some of the trends that we've seen in the census data, and then I'll go into a more specific Nevada update. So when we're talking about the census product releases, um, it's really important to understand that we're really midway through the products that are being uh, rolled out from the 2020 census. Um, I'm sure many of us have heard there have been a lot of delays due to the pandemic uh, for the Census Bureau releasing data. 
So we really only have two of the primary products that have been released to date from Census 2020. Uh, the first was the apportionment results that were released in April. These are the statewide numbers that were used to um, uh, allocate congressional uh, apportionment and representation in the House of Representatives. And then on August, uh, late August of 21, we saw the release of the public law uh, data for redistricting, what used to be called the summary file one. Uh, this is down to the block level. We got population totals, some race and ethnicity breakdown, housing occupancy data, group quarters counts. So um, that's the data that, that led into the um, redistricting effort that we've seen at the state and local level. Here in Nevada, we had our special session back in November uh, with the legislature uh, for redistricting, and then the various local governments have been going through the, the redistricting process. Um, but those are the only two data releases that we've seen thus far from Census 2020. We still have uh, a few more products that will be rolled out. There's a demographic profile coming up that will give us some more um, cohort data by age. We'll get some more information on sex, race, ethnicity, household data. Um, and then there's the, the more detailed data sets that will follow the demographic and housing characteristics file and the detailed demographic and housing characteristics file. Um, hopefully we'll see those in 2022. I'm hoping that the demographic profile will get released earlier than in the year than later, but there's still some question as to whether we're going to see all of these released by the end of this year or possibly into 2023. So we're only about 40% of the way through the release of the census data. Uh, but from what we saw in the public law data released, so nationally, um, we were able to see that the, the decade of 2010 to 2020 was a slow growth decade nationally. It was only second to the 1930s. Uh, there were fewer states, metro areas and counties that had the rapid growth that we had been seeing. And most counties in the nation lost population. But in Nevada, we uh, went counter to that. We were among the 13 states that had double digit population increase. We were at 15%. We were the fifth fastest growing state behind, wow. behind uh, Utah, Idaho, Texas, and North Dakota. Uh, in the state, Clark, Elko, Lyon, Nye, and Washoe were our fastest growing counties over the decade. Nationally, there was the continued shift of population from rural to metropolitan. This is something that's been going on for the last few decades. Uh, the rural population declined uh, by share by about 2%. And that uh, held true in Nevada. Uh, Esmeralda, Eureka, Lander, Lincoln, Mineral, Persian, and White Pine all posted population declines um, from 2010 to 2020 census. If we take a look at race and ethnicity, Nevada actually ranked uh, fairly high on the census uh, diversity index. We were the third highest behind Hawaii and California at 68.8%. And we were the fourth highest diffusion score behind Hawaii, Alaska, and Oklahoma. So what that really is, it's a, it's a measure of uh, you know, taking two people, chosen at random among a population, and the chances that they're from uh, different racial and ethnic groups. So, so that diversity index is showing the representation uh, and relative size of different racial and ethnic groups within the population. And then the diffusion score is measuring how unconcentrated the population is compared to the largest racial and ethnic group. In Nevada, that's primarily driven by our Hispanic population. Uh, that is the second most prevalent racial and ethnic group um, in all but one county in the state. Mineral County, it's actually Native American. Um, so those are all uh, second behind the white uh, racial group. And if we look at a county level, kind of where we stack up county to county, uh, Clark County actually came in as, the, as number 22 uh, on the census diversity scale. And that's out of 3,143 counties. Uh, Washoe and Mineral, they were ranked in the 300s. Pershing came in the 500s and Carson City in the 600s. So, um, so the Nevada County is actually ranked fairly high on the census uh, diversity rankings. 
we got a little glimpse at age. Uh, we don't have a very detailed cohort breakdown for the census data. It only tells us population 18 and over and under 18. Um, but we did see the continued trend that Nevada is getting older. Uh, the proportion of the adult population increased by 3.1% from 2010. So uh, the 18 and over population makes up 77.7% of our state's population by proportion. Um, so that, as I said, that's a continued trend that we've been seeing is that we're getting older in, in Nevada and nationally as well. We also got a little bit of look into housing from census to census. Uh, there was just over a 9% housing unit increase. Our vacancy rate dropped 6.2%. So we had more housing units and we also had higher occupancy of those housing units. The actual numeric change was about 107,000 additional housing units that were added from 2010 to 2020. So as I said, there's still more to come when we're talking about census. We, we're going to get more of those details on the age cohorts, the, the, you know, the sex breakdown, race and ethnicity. We'll get a little more information on that. Uh, we're going to see more household characteristics, tenure in household, uh, marital status, um, and also uh, some details on the group quarters populations, the makeup of those, those group quarters. So, so that's kind of the brief overview on the census side. Um, but obviously a lot has happened since April 1st, 2020. <laughs> so, you know, just, just a few things have happened. So I've been kind of tracking some of those trends more at the, the state level, um, trying to get really a pulse on what's been going on with our state population. So when we, we're looking at really trying to, to estimate population, we have to go back to the basic demographic formula. Um, so, so again, you, we take the the known population at a previous time point, we add a natural increase, we add a net migration, and that gives us an estimate for the current time point. Um, so natural increase, that is a, is a measure of births minus deaths, uh, and net migration is the immigration minus the immigration. Um, so if we start to break down those components of change while we're looking at Nevada, you know, if we look at the natural change, as I said, we're, we're an older, population, we're getting older, our births are going down. Uh, this is a graph here from data from Health and Human Services for statewide uh, net births, so births minus deaths. And we can see that just in the last uh, 10 years, you know, 2011, we were at just under 16,000 net births. And as of 2020, which is the latest data point, um, we are now just under 8,000. So we, we basically cut in half our um, natural increase just over the course of a decade. As of 2020, um, there are nine counties that had a zero or negative natural change and two of them with a single digit increase. And by single digit, I don't mean by percent, I mean the actual count of net births over deaths was in the single digits. So there might be an inclination to think, well, we had you know, deaths from the pandemic, perhaps that was affecting the numbers. But if we look back at 2019, we had eight counties that, that had negative natural change and uh, one county that had a single digit increase. So, so it's not specifically pandemic related. This is a trend that um, we're just not having as many babies to offset uh, the number of deaths. So Nevada doesn't get its population uh, from natural increase. It really comes from migration. When we talk about migration, there's really two pieces of that equation. There's the domestic migration. So inflow and outflow within the US, and then we have the international piece. So uh, incoming uh, migration from abroad and outflow to um, abroad as well. So domestically, we, we can see, so this is, the late, this is a graph of the, um, the latest census estimates. This is the series going back to 2010, and then the latest estimate series that was released at the end of December for 2020 and 2021. And we have to take it with a little bit of grain of salt because they have um, two different population bases that they're working with here. But I think it's pretty clear that you know 2018 was a, a peak year for domestic migration, for net domestic migration. We had the drop off because of the pandemic. And then it looks like we are having a slight recovery 
for 2021. Um, we don't have a lot of really solid data to look at yet. The IRS, they released data uh, based on tax returns. That has not been released yet for 2020, so we haven't seen anything post-pandemic uh, from the IRS. Um, there are some corporations uh, that release studies based on USPS address change data. Those haven't been released yet for, um, for uh, 2021. So um, we'll get more data to kind of see how the domestic migration flow, census also does a migration flow uh, publication. We haven't seen that uh, reported yet for 2020, 2021. Um, but the one piece that I, I've been looking at closely are these mover studies. So Atlas Van, or sorry, United Van Lines, North American Van Lines, U-Haul, they, they released these reports based off of uh, their internal data of where people are moving to, where, where's the inflow or inbound uh, moves, uh, the destinations that people are moving. So um, North American Van Lines, they mentioned in their 2020 report that uh, specifically Nevada, Oregon, Washington, uh, which had been at the top of their inbound move list, didn't make the top of the list for 2020. Uh, to me, the most telling was the United Van Lines report. Nevada was the number four inbound destination in 2018. We slipped to number 12 in 2019, number 22 in 2020. And then as of two weeks ago, they released their 2021 report. We're down to number 31 for inbound moves. Uh, in their in their study, and then U-Haul similarly showed in their growth index that we had dropped from number eight in 2020 down to number 29 in 2021. So, so there there very well may be a shift occurring here. Um, I think we're all kind of used to this idea of Nevada being a target destination for for domestic immigration, but um, we're seeing states like Texas, Florida. Utah, Idaho are now becoming those top destinations and Nevada seems to be slipping down in the rankings. If we take a look internationally, it's a little bit more difficult to piece together this picture. Um, net international migration has been declining for the last five years as reported by the census. Um, you can see in the chart on the left, that's their national graph. For Nevada, it's a little bit more difficult to see a clear picture. The way that the census publishes the net international migration at the state level is they, they apportion shares of the national net migration. So, you know, again, this is kind of cobbled together from the estimates that have been published since 2010. We can see that there was a peak in that 2016 time frame. We had a decline at the end of the decade. Uh, and then it looks like it might be rebounding a bit. Um, but again, we have to take that with a little bit of a grain of salt because um, there was a different blended base used for the 2020 and 2021 estimates. And also they did a lot of adjusted me methodology due to pandemic concerns. So they're relying a lot more on different kinds of administrative records data in order to create that net migration estimate. But, but what we do know is that about 20% of Nevada's population is estimated to be foreign born. That was from the 2019 ACS. We certainly have had pandemic effects with lockdowns, international travel restrictions. Um, we did have the immigration policy considerations at the um, trailing end of the 2010s. So that has impacted um, the net inter international migration, both nationally and uh, in Nevada. Um, looking at the uh, international level, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, they released a report back in October. They estimated that there was about a 30% drop in immigration to developed countries in 2020, which would have been the lowest since 2003. Um, we've seen headlines talking about international competition for workers. Uh, Germany is looking at attracting 400,000 migrant workers per year. Canada expects to issue 1.2 million visas by 2023 to attract workers. So the U.S. is facing a lot of competition internationally for migration, which you know that trickles down to affect Nevada as well. Um, but in the, uh, the estimates that were released in 2021, 
the census or in December last month, uh, the census did point out that for the first time, net international migration exceeded natural increase nationally in their estimates. Um, so I'm not sure if that's really a testament to a bump up in net international migrants or if it's more of the decline of our natural increase. So that 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 could be what's going on. So so we're still facing um, a lot of impacts, um, both from the pandemic and also from this demand for migrant labor. So in summary, uh, the pandemic effects are still lingering. Nevada's population is being affected, specifically how, maybe not as, as clear. Certainly our natural increase is declining. That's not how we're getting our population increase. Uh, it's coming from migration. The domestic migration may be decreasing. I'd like to see more data, specifically the IRS data and uh, some of that USPS data would be really helpful in determining um, how many people are we attracting. Um, international migration has certainly been affected by the pandemic and the demand for labor. Uh, in my estimates for 2021, which are still draft, they'll be certified and then published on March 1st, I'm seeing that about eight Nevada counties um, have a zero or negative population change, which is compared to five in 2020. So, so there are effects that are happening at the, the county level in Nevada. So, uh, so yeah, in the estimates that uh, I've drafted, um, you know, we're looking at about eight Nevada counties that have a zero or negative um, population change that's compared to five in 2020. So certainly, you know, these considerations are affecting the population in Nevada. Um, but on the other side, you know, uh, the, the estimates that were released a month ago by the census for 2021, they show Nevada as uh, ranked number nine in population growth nationally. So we're still getting a share of that population increase. So, um, so again, I'm kind of waiting for more data to be available to really understand more clearly how the pandemic is affecting our population. So, so that was my, my stock slide deck. I do have my um, kind of wrap up slide here that has the link to the state demographers website. This is where those uh, reports and publications get posted. Um, that's where you'll see March 1st, we'll have the um, certified population estimates for the counties, incorporated cities, and unincorporated towns. Um, we'll also have the five-year series of population projections. And then in the fall, you'll see those 20-year series of projections along with the age, sex, race, and Hispanic origin, as well as all the history of those reports that have been published out there. Um, and of course, my contact information as well. So, so Dr. Harris, uh, I'd be happy to entertain any questions that you have or any of the other participants. Yeah, glad you guys played. Very interesting. Uh, I think uh, what we have, uh, Matt, is um, uh, that last that last uh, address that Matt showed you. There's a lot of information you should get off of the website. You get those estimates. You got to remember those estimates are important. What he's doing is because the state of Nevada usually collect, collects a lot of its tax tax revenues at Carson City and dispersed out in the states. And population is used as a big factor in that thing. So uh, that's uh, that's what we'll do. Also, uh, I would say that uh, it's very interesting. I think uh, when we combine your data with David Schmidt's Dieter data, it's kind of even more reflective. I know we're talking about the great resignation going on. It'd be very interesting when the 65 year and older because we're, we're an area that retires and uh, what impact that has. I, I'm, I'm interested in that that U-Haul. You know how we everybody was thinking uh, things had kind of moderated a bit, but I wanted other people to have time to, to ask questions. And uh, I would say, uh, well, uh, I would uh, let me just go down the list here and ask people if they have questions. I don't have that many folks. Uh, uh, Betsy, you have a question? Fadali, see if. Hi, Tom. Hi, Betsy. <laughs> um, huh. Well, that was really interesting to see. I was I was really uh, uh, kind of surprised at the migration data. 
Um, but I, I, I can't think of a, a question right, right offhand. I'm sure I'll have one here in a second. Okay. Juan, Juan is an extension. Do you have a question? If you have a question, send me a, uh, something in the chat and I'll be sure to ask, put, uh, ask you one. Juan, if you have one. And I just shared that link in the chat yes. to the demographer website. Okay, good. Um, I, I did think of a question, uh, not on the presentation, but just the ACS data. Um, do you think, do you think that, uh, what's gonna happen with that? What's, what's, what is going on? And is this year, um, or 2021 going to be messed up too or? Well, the 2020, it wasn't usable because I think they don't, they received less than a third of the normal responses that they normally received. So um, I haven't seen specifically what the response rate is for 2021, but I think they're, they're trying to just pick it up as if it's business as usual. Hopefully they'll get the response rate that they need and have a solid uh, 2021 ACS. But I haven't seen the specifics yet as to um, how it's looking for for uh, accuracy and, and release schedule. Yeah, um, it's, it's been a problem with everybody. The, uh, I work with Implant Data, like you know, and they've been advising us to do impact to use 2020 data, run it with 2019 and average them because the economy is so messed up. A lot of people saying you should wait to the ACS to in 2021. And it's an unfortunate byproduct of COVID-19 and all the political mess. That's a uh, problem we're going through. So uh, uh, how about uh, uh, Juan, did, uh, can you get on? I see you have a question or can you, Bob, can you? Yeah. It, oh, he's are, okay. Go ahead. There are a couple questions in the chat here. Yeah, let, uh, let's get Bill. Bill, you, Bill's a, he's gonna ask you a hard question. He's a graduate of that esteemed university I came from, Oklahoma State. So Bill, Bill Brewery, if you can uh, mute yourself and ask your question. Thanks, Tom. Uh, I'm, of course, most interested in the rural counties. That's where we serve uh, with the Nevada Rural Housing Authority. And with eight counties uh, seeing a net loss, uh, of course, we're always concerned about those frontier counties. And that's basically the, the list you gave us. Do we see that reversing or is that going to be a trend that, that we face into the future, you think? It's been a trend and it kind of aligns with the national trend of shifting uh, population from rural to metropolitan. But the thing that I'm curious, and you know, obviously since 2020 things are, are changing, we hear about that movement of population out of metropolitan areas because of teleworking and um, you know, employment accommodations that can be, um, you, know, you, can, you can move to a rural area and still work wherever you, you want. So. I'm, I'm kind of wondering if that's going to counter that trend. The only data that I've really seen on that is uh, C.B. Richard Ellis, uh, the real estate company. They, they released data last year for 2020, and it actually used that U.S. Postal Service uh, change of address information. And what they were seeing is um, shifts out of high-priced metropolitan areas to smaller, low-priced metro areas. So I don't know if we're necessarily going to see population moving to rural but smaller metros might be increasing in population. So um, that may not impact Nevada directly, but there certainly is a shift going on as people are no longer tied to those larger metropolitan areas for, for work. And that's interesting. I've personally felt like we'll see the rural areas kind of blow up if we get the infrastructure in that'll bring the internet to them. But uh, how far that would reach is kind of the question. You know, Pioch might not blow up, but uh, Lovelock could, uh, depending on how far out it is. Yeah. I'd also agree, Bill, that, you know, areas, I know I work with Jan Morris and Winnemucca, there are a lot of areas like lithium that have the mines. Those areas, those rural areas are going to be expanding. And some of the other ones that do not have that, there there be some limitation. And it's always been a deal with the expanding rural infrastructure, broadband, uh, the new economy. 
uh, but uh, I do believe those areas such as uh, Winnemucca or no, whether our northeast, I don't think Elko, I don't think on the I-80 where a lot of our mines are, Matt, did you ever see any uh, population decrease? But what's interesting, I always look, if you look in 2000, it's been true as long as I've been in 40 years, about 80% of the population growth is Clark County. One man, one vote, one man, one dope, whatever. One man, one vote, that really, boom, that's where all the political power is. Right. And I uh, see Sienna Reed had a question. I don't know if you can read that, Matt. I'm happy to ask as well. Okay. I'm just uh, curious, there are a variety of different data sources referenced for uh, analyzing domestic migration. And just of those, do you find one to be better for county level analysis than others or easier to use? Yeah, so, so I think that the census is kind of the standard. They do release um, net domestic migration numbers. Right now, it's only available for 2020 and 2021 at the state level. They will get uh, more detailed migration flow data uh, by county. Um, and that's really been the challenge is that this, the data has not been available. Um, IRS is a great data set. Um, I know there's been some concerns over recent year that, may, that maybe some of the fraudulent um, returns might be affecting some of that data, but it's still kind of a, a popular standard. I think they're still stuck at 2018 or 2019. So we haven't seen any updated IRS migration data. Um, I think the USPS address change data is a really valuable data set, um, but I believe that's a, a commercial subscription product. So I don't really see that data until it's been processed by other parties like C.B. Richard Ellis when they do their study. They released their, um, their report by, by Metropolitan Statistical Area um, in April for the 2020 data. Um, so I'm hoping that in a couple months we're gonna see a similar report uh, released by them because that's really interesting to see. Of course, in Nevada, we only really get to see uh, Vegas, Carson City, and you know, sparks by MSA, um, but I still think it's a valuable uh, piece of, of that, inf that information puzzle. Jan, did you have a question, Morrison? I sure do, Tom, and th thanks for mentioning me. So I know there's not a quick solution, and Matt, I know we're gonna talk about this. I just wanna put a face to the pain these numbers cause us in the rural areas. There's a broad stroke approach and it's on a national level, it's every place. And I get that. The statistics are wrong. It's labor intensive to get actual ones, but I have an exploding county. We have a zero vacancy rate in our apartments. We know our population is increasing and, and what's coming down the road to us is probably um, at least a double digit population um, increase in the next uh, 10 years with our huge mega projects. I'm crippled because I don't have the data, the reliable data I have to, to attract the, the institutional financing that I need in the rural area to build what we need um, to house these workers coming along. I've got 2000 workers coming in the next five to six years on a workforce that's currently about 9,000. So there's no quick answer to that. We've hired, thank goodness, we've hired Brian and Bonenfant to um, provide some studies with us. We have him on a, on a consulting fee so that I can have him speak the language to um, lenders and those types of people. So, but it's a real hard fix. And quite frankly, it's beyond the ability of most rural counties to even address that. And I've, I've, uh, I've dogged um, Bill Brewer for the last eight years. <laughs> he knows me well in the efforts. We're doing everything possible to get them out here. but. I, I just have to say the rural counties need help. We're not sophisticated necessarily enough to get it, but we're being crippled. We're just being crippled by these numbers. And when I see it on GoEd, I'm, I'm director of the US uh, 9580 Regional Development Authority. And when our own GoEd uses these numbers too, MC instead of going to a private um, source that's maybe um, an estate, which could be you, it's just crippling to us. Um, we're undermined all the time. So I just, I'm frustrated. I'm just telling you that 
and it does have a huge impact to us in the rural areas, uh, especially as we have growth. And it's not just people um, escaping, um, you know, congestion of the urban areas. Of, of those 2,000 jobs, probably 14 of those, 1,400 of those, um, have salaries of over 85,000 a year. So um, it's, 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 it's a problem to meet those. Jan, it's a, you know, I think three counties, you and Esmeralda and I are going to have these mines come in. And, you know, Esmeralda, I mean, you're in bad shape. Just think of Esmeralda. And the, the, that's one of the problems we're going to have. Uh, I've been on many national committees and they'll say, well, you know, the rules aren't, we don't, uh, it's more expensive to do things in metro counties. And I kind of know it's more difficult to collect data in non-metros because things are sparsed out. I can't get DC to agree with that, but uh uh, well, but, but, and Tom, you know, our West Coast Salmon Project, yeah. that's not mining at all. Um, you look at the Lithium Nevada um, Project, only a small portion of that is mining. The rest is processing and uh -huh. manufacturing into lithium uh -huh. batteries. So um, the mines have always been a constant. That we work around them, but at any rate, the diversification, um, even the solar farms coming in, it's... it's uh, Diversification is coming down the road, um, other than mines, and we're just trying to grap grapple with it and do the best we can to accommodate it. There's also, I want to say, with Matt's data, and this is somebody has a question that's very prevalent, not only ethnicity, but also men, women, sex, what are in the different age groups, and that's very important and uh, because uh, the uh, women have become very big part of our labor force and uh, it's a growing population also. Uh, I always think it's very interesting that our natural growth of population is slow. People thought because we're at home, we're going to have a massive like baby boom like we had after World War II. That did not happen, did it, Matt? And so that has been very, uh, what's you know, so we need immigrants, that kind of thing. Uh, anybody else have any questions, please? Well, Matt, I appreciate your time. Uh, I wanted to introduce you to him. Uh, he has a lot of data. A lot of it can be used and you can use it with, and I always like to use that with Dieter data and, and Department of Taxation data, other data to look at an economy. Uh, some of this uh, population data just fits right into what's going on in our, our labor force, quite frankly, which Matt and David Schmidt at Dieter work a lot on. And uh, it gives, Kind of an interesting blend. We, I think sometimes people think of Nevada as a homogeneous. You look at the data sets, every county is completely different. I mean, the ethnicity, age, sex, all of it are, is uh, tremendously uh, changing. But it's, it's, it's also something to keep them, keep them rest on. It's like, uh, I think that U-Haul data, or uh, the, how all of a sudden we've been number two and you drop down to number four, you know, the thing is, those kinds of variations are often worrisome to me, variations, and which one becomes the basic trend, you know. So, Matt, if there's anything else you'd like to say, uh, we'll we'll close it up after that. Go right ahead, Matt. Bob. I, I appreciate the opportunity and, and, and the comments, and, uh, you know, I'm happy to, to you know, field any questions uh, offline that anybody may have, any any uh, any products that I can help uh folks identify either produced by my office or by the census, I'm happy to do that. So definitely feel free to reach out to me. And uh, yeah, that's said Juan from UNR, had to, they use theirs. They do a lot of small business development work, population, boy, and, and detailed maps, you know, where you want to locate. Everything's very essential. So, okay, uh, Bob, I'll let you, uh, Thank you, everybody, and we're recording this, and we'll hope to have it out. We have to do some other things with it, but we'll have it out in a week, and uh, hope to send out if you want to look at it later, and, and also people who did not uh, make the uh, uh, meeting. I do appreciate everybody's questions and, uh, uh, and insights. So we'll get another uh, webinar on another topic another time, but uh, I appreciate everybody uh, attending. Thank you, Matt. Thank you.